In this video, we will talk about another classic algorithm to explore a graph called breadth-first search. Breadth-first search can do some things that depth-first search cannot, like finding shortest paths and an unweighted graph. All graphs in this video are going to be undirected and unweighted. Let us consider a problem called the single source shortest paths problem. Given a vertex V, we want to find the shortest paths from V to all the other vertices and its connected component. The example graph we're going to look at in this video is this grid graph. We want to find the shortest paths from vertex zero to the other vertices in the graph. In particular, we're going to look at the shortest path from vertex zero to vertex three. There's a path of length three between these two vertices, which just goes across the top of the graph. Depth first search cannot solve the single source shortest path problem. In fact, if we say that in the adjacency matrix for our example grid graph here, that vertical neighbors always precede horizontal ones, then depth first search will take the path in red to go from vertex zero to vertex three. You see that it ver visits every other vertex in the graph before getting to vertex three. You can see this example at work in the given Godbolt link. So to find shortest paths, we're not gonna be able to use depth first search. We need to find something else. This is where breadth first search comes in. We can use breadth first search to solve this single source shortest path problem. Breadth first search is actually quite closely related to depth first search. In fact, you can view breadth first search as depth first search, where you just change the data structure. Breadth first search is exactly like the iterative version of depth first search, where we replace the stack data structure with a queue. Let's go ahead and look at the code. So here's some code for breadth first search. We're using three auxiliary variables here. The first is the visit queue. So this is a queue of vertices, and this is going to determine the order in which we visit vertices. This is what we re replace the stack with in depth first search. Now we're using this queue. The second is an array of Booleans called marked. We use this just like in the depth first search case so that we do not add a vertex to the queue twice. The third variable is called edge2, and this is an array of vertices. We're going to use this array to actually find shortest paths, not just determine if vertices are connected. Let's go ahead and run the code on our example graph. We initially call breadth first search on vertex zero. I'm just showing the while loop of the code on the slide to save space. Before this while loop started, we marked vertex zero and added it to the queue. <clears throat> so now the while loop starts and we're going to pop zero out of the queue. In the for loop, we add the unmarked neighbors of zero to the queue and mark them so they will not ever be added to the queue again later. We also set the edge to array to indicate that each of the neighbors of zero we visit were visited from vertex zero. So here we add the neighbors of zero to the queue, uh, we mark them, and we set the edge two variable to indicate that both vertex one and vertex four we visited from vertex zero. And also recall that in our adjacency list, vertical neighbors appear before horizontal neighbors. So we first add vertex four to the queue and did add vertex one to the queue. So note that at this point in our program, the vertices in the queue are exactly those vertices at distance one from vertex zero. Now we continue to the next iteration of the while loop we process the oldest item in the queue, which is vertex four. So now we will pop vertex four out of the queue. 
and we add the unmarked neighbors of vertex 4 to the queue. So we add vertex 8 and vertex 5 to the queue in that order. Vertex 0 is not added to the queue, even though it's a neighbor of vertex 4, because vertex 0 is already marked. So note that now all the vertices in the queue are either at distance 1 or 2 from vertex 0, and those at distance 1 come first. Okay, now we move on to the next iteration of the while loop and we process the oldest item in the queue, which is vertex one. So we're going to pop vertex one out of the queue, and we add the unmarked neighbors of vertex one to the queue. As vertex zero and vertex five are already marked, we just add vertex two to the queue. So we add vertex two to the queue, we indicate that we visited vertex two from vertex one, and now we go to the next iteration of the while loop. We're going to process the oldest item in the queue, which is vertex 8. So we pop vertex 8 out of the queue and add its unmarked vertices to the queue. So this adds vertices 12 and 9 to the queue in that order. And we mark the edge 2 array for, for vertex 9 and vertex 12 to indicate that we visited them from vertex 8. So now in the queue, we have vertices 5, 2, 12, and 9. So all the vertices in the queue are at distance 2 or 3 to vertex 0, with those at distance 2 coming first. OK, so I'm going to start to go a bit faster now. So in the next iteration of the while loop, we're going to process 5. I've already popped it out of the queue here. And we're going to add its unmarked neighbors to the queue. So we're just going to add vertex 6 to the queue because all the other neighbors of 5 have already been marked. So you see that vertex 2 is now the oldest item in the queue. So that's what we're going to process next. So we pop vertex 2 out of the queue. We add its unmarked neighbors to the queue. So that's vertex 3. We indicate that we arrived at vertex 3 from vertex 2. And now we've actually found a path of length 3 from vertex 0 to vertex 3. So we've found the shortest path from vertex 0 to vertex 3. Let's go ahead and see how we can reconstruct this path. So we actually reconstruct this path by working backwards from vertex 3 using this edge 2 array. So we arrived at vertex 3 from edge 2 of 3. And you can see in the picture here from the red arrows that edge 2 of 3 is equal to 2 because we visited vertex 3 from vertex 2. <clears throat> and now we arrived at vertex 2 from edge 2 of 2. And that's equal to uh, vertex 1. And finally, we arrived at vertex 1 from edge 2 of 1, which is equal to 0. OK, so we can use this edge to array to trace our path backwards to actually find this shortest path from vertex 3 to vertex 0. So now we have our shortest path. It goes from vertex 0 to vertex 1 to vertex 2 to vertex 3. Now let's step back and look at some general properties of breadth-first search. So say that we run breadth-first search starting on vertex v. Let's see that this actually solves the single source shortest paths problem for vertex V. So the claim is that for any vertex U that is connected to V, tracing back the edge two relationships starting from U and then edge two of U, et cetera, will give us a shortest path from vertex V to vertex U. So as we saw in this example, vertices enter the queue in order of their distance from V. And this is the key property of breadth-first search. We added all, this, all vertices at distance k from V before adding any vertex at distance k plus 1 from V. So you can actually use this property to show the fact by induction. 
So essentially this property is going to mean that we will always discover u from its neighbor that is closest to v. In a connected graph, like in our example, the edge two array is always going to define a tree. So here I have drawn in red an edge between u and edge two of u for every vertex u that is not zero. So you see that this will define a connected graph with n minus one edges, right? Because we have an edge between u and edge two of u for every u that is not zero. So that gives us n minus one edges. And this is a connected graph on n vertices with n minus one edges. So it's a tree. So this tree is a very useful object because it's actually what's called a shortest path tree. The path in this tree between vertex zero and any other vertex will be a shortest path between these vertices in the original graph. Now let's talk about the running time of breadth first search. So we can reason about the running time of breadth first search in a very similar fashion to what we did for, for depth first search. We only ever add unmarked vertices to the queue. And once we add them to the queue, then we mark them. So this ensures that each vertex is added to the queue at most once. Now, when we pop a vertex out of the queue to process it, we iterate over all of its neighbors and we do a constant amount of work on each neighbor. So in the adjacency list model, this can be done in time proportional to the degree of the vertex. So thus the total time that we spend is going to be the sum of the degrees over all the vertices visited, which is proportional to the total number of edges in the connect connected component that we explore. Just like with depth first search, we can wrap breadth first search into another loop in case the original graph is not connected. So once we finish exploring the connected component of one vertex, if there's still a vertex that is unmarked, we can find it and run breadth first search on, on that vertex and just keep repeating this process until all vertices in the graph are marked. In this way, we can ex explore all the connected components of the graph. And the running time of this procedure becomes order the number of vertices plus the number of edges.